Hello, hello, gang. Hello. Um, it's been a while since we've had the privilege and pleasure of Susan McComas' company because she's been off being busy and successful in show business. So, what big, huge, guilty feminist welcome to Susan McComas. Oh, it's so good to be back. It's so lovely to have you back. And I think you will agree, if it's not... Oh, this is real, I'm a feminist, but I'm a feminist, but I've really been objectifying Susan McComa backstage because I think you'll agree she's wearing a pink fluffy play suit and the sort of boots that Twiggy would have worn in 1969 and she is looking aflame. Do wow. we say flame? I don't know. I feel like I... I what think, I mean is that emoji of the flame. The flame. Yeah. I think we say it because it's a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Fla- people are saying I should say fire. I'm trying to make flame happen. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but I... By the end of the year, flame will happen, and it will be down to me, and it will be traceable back to me. So what I'm going to need to do... I'm going to need you all to tweet stuff like, oh, she's looking flame today, and I don't want the emoticon oh. in there. I want you to say the word flame, and you just don't have to say TM, Deborah Francis Wind. You just make it happen for me. Are you open to that? Okay. So I need everyone to get their phones out now then. And we're going to do a thunderclap flame tweet. And you can either say, uh, at the Guilty Feminist, Susie McComas looking flame, Susie Please and Deborah looking flame. Please say that. Please yeah. say that. You can if you want to say Susie and Deborah looking flame. Although you can I, say that. You I'm a feminist, but when I was backstage, I just said, I'm never going to look as flame as you again. Like, I just feel, I'm just feeling that feeling that I've missed the turn off for this level of flame. I do, I do not accept that. I do, I, I'm a feminist, but Deborah, I objectify you every single day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm a feminist, but I, sometimes I really just want to be a sex object for an hour. I just, like, I just a fucking hour a week. That's fine. I don't want to be a sex object. Obviously, it shouldn't objectify women. We don't want to be objects, but an no. hour a week. I do, though. And I know it's not right, and I know I'm not meant to want that, and I want it. I just want it. Objectify me, please. Uh... Yes! Thank you. God damn, it's good to be back. <laughs> but, like, can you just stand up and show them that outfit, though? A- absolutely. I'm a feminist, but please give them a twirl. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Outrageous. I'm such a dickhead. <laughs> I'm not wrong. No. That was such a good model turn. I, I, I think part of your flame is obviously your face and your figure and your hair. Fair. But part of your flame is that confidence to be able to just do that without apology. And I did apologise afterwards. Did I was t- like, I'm a dickhead. <laughs> you did a tiny apology at the end, but you don't do it in the moment. You do a sort of, you know, uh, like, you're obviously British, so you've got to do a little one at the end. You've got to always. Dimension. You, you don't want, you know, but you, in the moment, you sell it. And what I what? would do is this. I'd do be it. like... <sighs> yes. Joking. <laughs> joking. <laughs> joking. Ha <laughs> ha. And I want to be able to do what you did. Can you just show me again? I'm Listen, a feminist, but just show me fine. again. Do you know what it is? I do think it's um, uh, the Nigerian in me. Because like, if you've ever been around a lot of like Nigerian women, they'll all be looking at themselves going, oh, I am so gorgeous. God has blessed me. God has... Been, look, oh, wow. Look at me. Look at you. You are not even close. So, um, <laughs> what I do is I try and channel my Nigerian aunties. And that's all I do. I just go, oh, okay. s- say this after me. Right? Oh, I don't think I should. No. <laughs> I, I really like not being cancelled. I love it. I love getting out of bed and thinking, I'm not cancelled today. And it'd just be nice to get to midnight, wouldn't it? Not being cancelled. Oh, don't get cancelled. Don't, okay, don't do it in the accent. Oh. Right? And, and, and Resist. Luckily, I could not. <laughs> luckily, I'm not good at accents. Just Thank say, God. just say, wow, I'm gorgeous. Wow, I'm gorgeous. And say again, wow, I'm gorgeous. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay. Don't right. put a breath in there. You no, can't no have a breath. breath. No breathing. Okay. Just, no. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Go. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> I'm fucking hell. You put a lot. Don't. Sorry, no. go again, go okay, again. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Walk me. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Again. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm gorgeous. gorgeous. Turn. Wow, I'm gorgeous. There. Wow, wow. I'm gorgeous. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Wow. 
gorgeous. Yes! Gorgeous. I can't See? stop. She could do I'm it. I'm gorgeous. Okay, I can't stop. stop. I can't stop. stop. Thank you. <laughs> We've got a timer. We've got a timer. That was helpful. But see, yeah, just say it and you'll believe it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it I've is been, helpful. I've been alone. Uh, I think it's the permission note. You gave me permission to do that. And I Absolutely. think we don't always have the permission. And I think we need to give each other permission to do it. And your aunts have yeah. given you permission. Now you've passed that permission on to me. I have. So I feel like we should pass the permission on to the audience. Yes. Does anyone fancy doing it? Okay. Who Shall we stand, stand if you'd like or and you're able or don't have to if you don't want to, but yes, stand if you... If you can. A little quorum of standards Come would be good. On. Okay. We've a all quorum. been in Uggs for the last two years. <laughs> right, ready? Okay. Wow, I'm a gorgeous. Go. Wow, I'm gorgeous. Again, wow, wow. I'm gorgeous. gorgeous. Turn, wow, I'm, I'm gorgeous. gorgeous. Wow, I'm 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 gorgeous. Ah, you're all fit. Some dancing overtook me that I'm not sure was that sexy, but it just happened. I channeled. It felt more like, more more like '90s bopping. More like, I I kind of want to be like. I mean. I mean, still, but there's something so sexy about that. In it, about the letting go. About the letting go. Mm. It's very attractive. I am going to need you to teach me the slut drop because I don't... <laughs> I just sort of did, I think, what I thought you were doing. Yeah. I'll be honest, I don't really know what you were doing. Or yeah. I could see that it looked cool. Yeah, cool, thank you. And I just thought, just sell it. Just rep, rep, Absolutely. Just do something approaching that and sell it. But I'm going to need lessons. And also, I'm very intrigued by... You know what they do on Drag Race? And it looks very dangerous. And I do mm. think that a lot of them are going to have problems later in life. But they do something... <laughs> Death oh, drop. Dollar death drop. Oh, yeah. Do you see what I mean? I saw someone recently live doing this, and they were diving off a stage yeah. onto a wooden floor, and I was like, yeah. this is not good for you. And I, the mother in me yeah. really supersedes the fabulousness in me, and I start going, darling, I really do think you should see a chiropractor or something. <laughs> you know, You're like, I love it, I love it, thank you, but also think of yourself in ten years. Well, isn't that what happened to Prince? Because he was in the, the hills, and then didn't he just like mess up his back? Yeah. No? Yeah. Did he? <laughs> yeah, I read that. That's what I Because he was in the Cuban it. hills all the time, and he would do like, da 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 splits up, down, da uh, and yeah. then he just, he hurt his back. Well, I think he more than hurt his back, I think he ruined yeah. it but like Oof. yeah it's a lot in heels so I think I'm going to hesitate okay. on learning the death drop okay. I don't think I think I'm sexy enough I don't need it yeah. but I do want to learn the slut drop we can arrange that Debs yeah okay great alright thank you um, <laughs> it's on the agenda it is um, is there anything else I should learn audience in any other dance to... moves has anyone learned any dance moves over lockdown I said that with no um, expectation because <laughs> I know that we're all just surviving but did anyone take up a dance any kind of dance flamingo or salsa I did or... I, did. I learned a TikTok dance recently because I've been doing dance <gasps> classes for two years what did yeah. you learn that's what I mean like a TikTok yeah. so, someone learned a TikTok dance no it was a song called Fuck, two... no one did it was a song called 2am <laughs> Go on. It was a song called 2 a.m. Oh, I don't know. I haven't practiced it, so I'd have to have a I'd have to have a look at it before I did it. But um, it was a song. Oh, what was it? It's it's 2 a.m. and something's happening. I'll see if I can <laughs> see if it's I can two. find it. I'm not on TikTok. Who's on TikTok here? <laughs> oh, that's low. <laughs> Are okay, we? I'll see. I'll see if I can find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll see if I can find it. Good. Okay. Okay, okay got it, got now, it. for those listening, Deborah is currently doing this TikTok dance okay. right, and I playing. Think I've got, I think I've got a bit, you can't read the music, so it's going to really ruin it. Put, put your mic to it. Honestly, I think I need to be not holding a camera in one hand <laughs> and watching myself do it ages ago. What I'll do is next time Susie and I do the show, I'll teach her to do it. And yes. the two of us will perform it live. Because I feel I'm not going to do it justice right now. Absolutely. That's what Are you doing. on for learning 2 a.m.? And then we'll have the music boomed out. So when we come out, we will just open 
No with words. Lights down, lights up. We're just going to open with a TikTok dance. No context. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and just listen, faces looking at and us I like, don't care if fuck? there's nobody in this audience who's in that audience. We will never explain why we've done that. No. <laughs> we'll finish. We'll finish. We won't even wait for applause. And we'll just sit down and carry on with the show. I think, yeah, we should probably do a round of I'm Gorgeous and then sit down. And then just never explain we it. We never ever talk about it again. <laughs> we never need to explain it. Live from King's Place in London, the Spontaneity Show presents The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Rogers' wife, let's go, Susan McComber, and our very special guest, Lana, let me explain, talking about sex, relationships, and all that stuff. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. I'm Deborah Francis White, with me is Susan McComa, and we're talking about sex, relationships, cheating, and all of that stuff. Woo! Okay, let's get on with the good stuff. Now, you uh, have just done this inspired... It was inspired by a couple of things, this episode. Uh, it was inspired by uh, the fact that this is Valentine's Day, uh, that we're recording it. If you're listening in the future... Um, Hello, I hope it's good there and that Boris Johnson's in jail. Um, uh, I sense that he won't be because I know how the world works or at least how it's worked up until now and there's no signs of justice. Um, So it would be an exceptional turn of events. Uh, But uh, we we live in hope. So it's Valentine's Day. Uh, Susan, you have just done a show on the BBC called Cheaters, which is a bunch of 10-minute episodes. I've been away for two weeks, so I've only just started watching it, and it's fantastic. Thank you. It's so good. It's so much fun. I mean, we haven't discussed it yet, but you, you, um, we see a lot of you in the first episode, if you don't mind me saying. You see my tits. Yeah. <laughs> they are looking flame. <laughs> God. They are yes. looking flame. Thanks. Yes, it's a really joyful, funny, shaggy show. That's what very I'm going to say. Yeah. It's very shaggy and really, really wonderful. Um, and it's about cheating. Uh, how did you feel about it when you went into this? Was it fun to cheat and explore in this play space? Yeah, in this play space, I love that. Yeah, it was. I wanted to do it because I wanted to get into the head of somebody who who cheats. My character, Fola, she cheats on her husband. There's no, that's not a spoiler that happens like in the first episode. And yeah, I just wanted to see what that was like and also to, you know, there were other elements to it in terms of how you tell a story. This is quite wanky, but like how you tell a story like with your body and, you know, sex and how do we tell that truthfully and without Mm. it being gratuitous and, you know, having people have sex with all sorts of bodies and I do that as well so um so yeah no it was just a really cool experiment and the whole thing was very kind of an indie way of making things so we made the show and then sold it to a broadcaster so bbc wasn't involved initially so it all felt a little bit more Mm. organic and playful that's why i loved the fact that you used that so yeah i just yeah did you because i think it's a really interesting space cheating for feminism because if you cheat with a man and he has a female partner or you cheat with a woman and she has a female partner, if she doesn't know about it, she can't be consensual to it. Yeah. If the relationship is not open, you're sleeping with somebody who has committed to somebody else. And if that other person is a woman, I mean, if they're a human being, it's not great. But as far as a feminist goes, if they're a woman or a person of a minority gender, is there a feeling that you get about, oh, my God, I'm betraying the sisterhood? I I definitely feel that. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to explore this in Cheaters because I feel that very, very strongly. I also have some of my closest amazing friends who have told me that, you know, they have ended up in situations where they are cheating or they fall in love with somebody when they're committed to someone else. There's lots of different reasons to cheat, I think. Um, but take your pick. Take your pick, guys. <laughs> so many different just reasons. Put, just write it all down in a piece of paper, put it in a cup, and then just pick one out, and that will be your reason. <laughs> a selection box of reasons to it's cheat. A quality street of reasons <laughs> to cheat. <laughs> that rhymes. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I just... I've always found that very difficult, the idea of, like, I'm hurting my 
sister or that, that it's all it's about consent do you consent to be a mm. part of this if you do great but if someone if you're not allowing somebody to to partake in that conversation i do feel it's a little bit cruel yeah and I, if it yeah comes back i was remembering sex in the city when carrie was cheating with big yes. and charlotte found out and charlotte was about to get married and she said what if somebody did that to me and carrie said well i would kill them like yeah. if they did it to you, but I don't know Natasha, so it's she's a sort of a nameless, faceless, or you know, she's she's a remove away, yeah. and so it doesn't really feel like I'm hurting somebody. Well, a lot of people say that they'll say like it's the responsibility of the person in the relationship, isn't it? So if we're talking about heterosexual relationships, and you're me, and you're having sex with somebody who is in a relationship with a woman, then if I don't know who that person is, it's quite easy. Well, I don't find it easy, but like. I know that it can you can have that one step of removal and so therefore it isn't your responsibility it's the person in the relationship mm -hmm. but I just I personally find that very tricky because mm -hmm. I always it's the thing in primary school that I was taught which is you treat other people the way that you want to be treated have I ended up by mistake being the other woman oh yes have you yes you were the other woman. And, and I, was, I didn't know. It was revealed to you. It was revealed to Who me. Who revealed it? Did the other woman reveal it to you or the person you were sleeping with? So the, what, it's happened a couple of times. So um, that, that's not a reflection on me, guys. Um, <laughs> don't, don't fucking judge me. Um, no, it was... No, the first time it happened was I was hooking up with this guy and we'd been working together and it was all a bit of a lead up and then we were sort of hooking up and it was all great and then he turned around to me and said oh by the way I have we were going to go home together and he turned around and said by the way I have a girlfriend and I went that's me that's me taking my face off his face because um, he said it to me whilst his mouth was in my mouth so it was like oh. echo joking what <laughs> isn't that gross no it's gross um, so I did that and I, that was no I don't mean I mean like kissing I don't mean, anyway um, it's fine. I, I don't mean I didn't mean a so <laughs> fuck it hell oh, I need to it's been a while um, so I immediately in that moment I said I was like no I'm gonna go home and I went home and I felt very righteous I felt very righteous and then two days later he messaged me and said I've broken up with her do you want to go on a date and I said yes <gasps> cause I've got no self esteem then I've got self esteem now uh, yeah. No, I did. No, I did. But for me, he was like, no, I broke up with her. It wasn't working and stuff. Yeah. I'm not with him. Spoiler. Um, because. <laughs> yeah. Start, it's, it's I think relationships that start that way. I'm not saying no relationships that started that way has not lasted. Some do. Some absolutely do. But it's a tricky old zone, that relationship. Just can I just hear from the audience? If you think cheating is a feminist issue where there is another woman, can you just go, hmm? Oh, if you fuck. think it isn't, if you think it's down to that person to be faithful and it's nothing to do with you, go, hmm? It's a lot of undecideds or no opinions. Oh. If, if, if there's not another woman, but there's another man. So say you were going to bed with someone and they had a boyfriend or, or rather than a girlfriend or a them friend. Um, if that person that they, that if there was another, if the other person was a cishet man, is that a feminist issue? Just go, mm. nobody thinks that. What? So you, it's fine if it's a man. That's interesting. <laughs> it's a straight man. It's, it's, that's fine. Even you, Ellen Jones, didn't go, mm, for that. And that's... It's an you didn't, did you? No. <laughs> you, so if you met a woman and she went, I've got a husband, but I really fancy you, and uh, let's, let's not worry about that, would you be okay with that? Stick with my hypothetical. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. I think it's where it's not necessarily, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I think there's a difference when it's you're in a straight relationship and that's always been a situation. And we don't, like, there's a lot of, in this hypothetical, I don't know whether they've not had the opportunity to be queer, they've never, like, they've not reached, like, realized, you know, what the situation is. They might not want to come out to their partner. There's, like, a lot of variables. So you might yeah. feel it's okay for feminism because you're giving them the opportunity to explore, explore their queer side, which they might not be able to do within the structures of the patriarchal marriage. Would this justification depend on how hot they were? <laughs> is it an exponential... Is it a sliding scale? 
If you're listening well, at home, she said, honestly, babe, it's been a while. Well, there's a character in Cheetahs who cheats on her male cishet partner with a woman. And, you know, it's quite clear that this character... I think it's played by Callie Cook, who's in the audience. Is she in the audience? I think she is. There she give is. us a cheer if you're in Cheetahs and you're in the audience. Are you in the audience, Callie? Say again. Hello. Yeah. Um, there she is. So her, I'm talking for, for you now. Um, so her character hasn't had the opportunity to explore her queer side. And so I do feel there is, I'm not saying that therefore it, it, does, it hurts less, but I do think that there is a conversation there if somebody doesn't feel like they've been able to explore their full selves whether it's because of society or whatever Mm -hmm. kind of pressures that they've felt upon them interesting very interesting um check it out i really enjoyed it would you like to hear a trailer for cheetahs (laughs) seamless (laughs) then let's hear that trailer now we've got to get going are you all right Mm, yeah sorry just never really done this before Cheating on Esther, my girlfriend. Esther. Her name's Esther. She cheated on you, right? She did. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. Just, this does not feel great in the light of day. No offence. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I'm married. What? How is that going to make me feel better? Why didn't you say anything? It never came up. I 100% would have not done anything if I knew... Oh, please. Coming from the guy in an 11-year relationship. Fuck! I can't believe this. I mean, do you even have a wedding ring? It was on my finger, which was literally around your cock. How did you not notice that? Great ending! (laughs) Cheetahs, check it out. Is it BBC One? Uh, BBC One on Tuesdays after this is going to her. You can find it all on iPlayer, all 18 episodes. 18 10 minute episodes. They're really lovely, bite sized. I warn you, they're Moorish. Uh, and they're kind of addictive. So you'll just go, oh, just one more. It's only 10 minutes. Just one more. It's only 10 minutes. Just one more. It's 4 a.m. Yes. <laughs> okay. I warn you, that's, I just need to warn you health and safety. Hello, Guilty Feminists, it's Deborah. We will be in Brighton on the 5th of March for our big International Women's Day bumper show. I will be there with Jessica Hines from Spaced and W1A and from our big Royal Abbott Hall show. We'll also be there with Zoe Lines, Sakisa, Jess Robinson, Grace Petrie and Laurie Penny. It is a bumper International Women's Day special. Get your tickets now. Uh, The second show on the UK tour is in Nottingham on the 6th of March. We'll have Jade Adams, Jen Brister, Celia AB and Jess Robinson. And we're continuing around the UK. We are coming somewhere near you and we will have the rest of our comedians bills announced soon. And on the 14th of March, Alison Spittle and I are coming to Vicar Street for one of our legendary Dublin shows. In July, we're coming to Australia and New Zealand Get tickets for all of these at guiltyfeminist.com. And finally, if you'd like to join our Patreon, you'll get ad-free episodes and some other goodies from as little as £2.50 a month. So if you'd like to support the podcast, join Patreon now. And now, on with the podcast. Would you like to hear some stand-up comedy? Please welcome on stage the incredible Susan McCormick! Hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, gosh, that's... Hi. I'm not going to mess around. I'm in heels. That's fine. Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. It is so good to be back. I think the last time I did a show was... I think it was the very last show that we did at the South Bank Centre, I think. So it's been just before lockdown was my last show. And I feel like without the guilty feminist, I just feel like... It's my moral compass. Every time I come here, I sort of remember who I am and what I'm about. And since I haven't been doing the show, I feel like I've made a a series of mistakes, loads of mistakes over lockdown. Um, I'm going to tell you some of them. Um, One of them was I got an orange weave. Uh, I was... 
I was having a meltdown. My friends were really nice about it. They were like, oh, it's cool. But I know that I looked fucking stupid. But I appreciated everyone sticking by me. Um, there was a point where I moved to Kilburn. That was a mistake. Uh, who's, who's from Kilburn? None of you. No, really. Um, yeah, I lived there. That was horrid. Um, and then after a while, I... So I had a really big break from dating because I'm, I have a brain. And then towards the... As, as the world started to open up, I had loads of my really good friends say, hey, you know, you should try it again. Like, you know, go on the apps and whatever. And I didn't. Um, so I went to Rome instead. And um, I met this man uh, called uh, Colin, uh, which is Colin uh, <laughs> in French. I remember when I was like, oh, Colin. And he was like, no, Colin. I was like, it's, it's Colin. Um, but he was really fit and he's really French, so I'm in. And he was queer, I'm in. Um, hello, Colin, he's going to be, he might listen to this. Um, that's his real name, shit. It's funny, it was funny. It was a funny name. It's him. So um, I went on a few dates with Colin and uh, Colin told me uh, that he was in an open relationship. I was like, cool, this is new. This is, yeah, if I'm going to date, I'm doing this differently. I'm not going to do it the way that I did before. Otherwise, I'd rather watch paint dry. So um, he told me that he had a girlfriend um, and she had an equally French name that I can't remember. So let's call her Julie. And um, so me and Colin, we got together a few times and it was amazing. It was genuinely a really wonderful, brilliant time. And I thought, yes, brilliant. There's some good ones out there. That's great. Um, and then he was like, Susie, I'm going to do a bad, fuck it, I'm going to commit. Susie, I'm having a uh, gallery um, opening. It's not a euphemism. I've ruined that. Um, he's like, I'm having a gallery opening at my apartment. You should come along and uh, see the art. I was like, yes, I will see the art. Um, and he was like, my girlfriend will be there. I was like, huh, uh, cool. So uh, I turned up uh, dressed as non-threateningly as possible. Oh. And uh, she opened the door and she was, of course, gorgeous and French. And I went, <laughs> I went, hi, hi, I'm Susie. And she went, I know who you are. Oh. I was like, oh my God, just slap me around the face. <laughs> this is so hot. Anyway, um, <laughs> she invited me in and it was, it was an, they'd open up their apartment and there was a gallery opening and there was loads of pieces of work. And she was like, okay, so you can go through there. You'll see that piece, you'll see that piece. Then she opened the door of the bedroom and she went, you know where the bedroom is. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, slap me again. Um, <laughs> Julie. Um, but yes, I could see that she was struggling with it. I could see that even though she clearly had agreed to be in this open relationship, there was something about seeing another woman as opposed to maybe another man that she didn't feel comfortable with. So I thought, okay, I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. I'm a feminist but your boyfriend's fit, but also I'm out. So I feel like I've just made quite a few mistakes. And the thing is, I'm obsessed with mistakes. When I'm, when I'm actually making a mistake, there's a bit of my brain that's going, don't make the mistake. And there's a bit of my brain that's also going, think of the memoirs. So <laughs> I've got, oh, my memoirs are going to be so great. Please don't die before they come out. <laughs> it's going to be a number one bestseller. Um, so constantly I'm just at war with myself. And so I'm in the show called Cheetahs, which we just discussed. And one of the reasons why I really wanted to be in the show was because I really wanted to explore why people cheat. Um, just before doing the show, I got cheated on. I know. <laughs> what? Yes, I've joined the ranks. Beyonce, <laughs> Robert Patterson, <laughs> Cheryl. Cole, Tweedy, what are we saying? I don't know. Um, so I feel, don't feel sad for me. I feel like I'm in really, really good company. And there's a myriad, there's a myriad of reasons why people cheat. But I've generally struggled with the idea of participating in the hurt of another woman, especially if it's a black woman. White women, you're fair game. But black women, I'm like, <laughs> no, no I, won't, I won't do that to a sister. I won't, I won't. Um, but I also feel that there's an element of the very false notion of heterosexual scarcity so 
Men are prizes. A really good man is hard to come by. Women, I'm talking about heterosexual relationships, women are in competition with each other for men. Men are prizes. Men are prizes. I'm going to tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you what men are. I once... (laughs) I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to fucking tell you. I was in a police interrogation room this is a true story and if you're one of my really good friends you're going to be like oh shit she's going to say it she's going to say it I'm going to say it I was in a police interrogation room in Edinburgh because I had missed my coach going back to London uh, during the Edinburgh Fringe this was many years ago and I didn't have any money so I went to the police station and I was like I'm stranded and this other guy turned up at the police station and was like he's stranded and we were in this room like waiting room thing anyway we got chatting it was really really cold um, I decided I might rub up on him and that's exactly what I did I hadn't slept or washed for 24 hours for 24 hours men are not prizes they're slags they're fucking easy that's what men are that's what men are but have you ever met those people who these anointed people who go I've never cheated I've never been cheated on I've never been cheated on so smug so smug um Sound of woos. Who here has not been cheated on? Okay, I respect you. I respect you. Um, I went on a date the other week where this guy was being really smug and he said, I've never been cheated on. And I thought, (laughs) I'll fix that. (laughs) I was like, I like a challenge. I like a challenge. Um, I could never cheat. I'm just too much of an angelic wonderful person to ever participate in such disgusting behavior um but cheating mentally isn't the same thing is it is it a sound of okay sound of woos is cheating mentally cheating no. yeah okay i like you guys um <laughs> but i do think i do think karma i do think that Karma came to bite me. I do, I really do think that. I'm not a nice person. I'm a, I'm a bitch. I'm a, a total shithead. Because the, the guy that um, uh, cheated on me, I did spend... No, I'm going to be really honest. Every single orgasm I had in that relationship was due to me thinking about my ex going down on me. Every fucking single one. And do you want to know what? I don't know how you guys cheat because I was stressed. It was so much fucking admin, making sure that I didn't say the wrong name, making sure that I like made him a nice porridge in the morning because I just felt this guilt all the time, making sure that I just like overlooked bits of like manipulation and gaslighting because I just felt guilty all the time. It, I don't know how you do it. Like I absolutely salute you, but... I completely stand by this. You don't know who the fuck you are until you've been cheated on. You do not know who the fuck you are. One word, lemonade. <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> yeah, oh, come on. That, you know, if you're going to get cheated on, make, make millions. Um, and then Robert Patterson, like I said before, Robert Patterson, Kristen Stewart, he's the new Batman or Spider-Man, or whatever the fuck. And she is Diana and queer. See, we can grow stronger from it. You look at something like being cheated on and it feels like the worst thing on earth. But it isn't. You live through it and you can be like me, absolutely fabulous. So yes, I condone everybody in here to be cheated on. You'll be better for it. Thank you very much. Show some a cover, everybody. Folks of King's Place in London, please welcome to the mic, Deborah Francis White. It's Valentine's Day if you're here right now, if you're listening in the future. It isn't anymore, but it was. Um, but whatever day of the year it is, uh, romance, sex, love, these things are on our mind because we're human beings. Um, so I'm going to look at the science of love. 
romantic love is broken down into three categories, if science is to analyze it. Lust, attraction, and attachment. Each category is identified by a set of hormones released from the brain. Stage one, lust, releases testosterone and estrogen. Both, no matter what gender you are. We have this idea that it's men, it's testosterone, women, estrogen. No, not true. Men, women, and non-binary people all have testosterone and estrogen. If you are feeling lusty, your brain releases that. Oh, and you're thinking, oh, I really fancy them. What you're feeling is chemicals, chemicals coursing around your body. Stage two of love, attraction, releases dopamine, serotonin, and now I don't really know how to pronounce this, so I'm going to need a scientist in the audience to tell me. Norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Johnny. Johnny. Are you a scientist? Then how do I trust you? <laughs> do, are you just a man who's read it once? Uh, are you a man who's read it on the page, thinks you know, and has give, taken that authority and thought, it's definitely going to be the way I thought, not a woman? Or, Johnny, are you someone who actually knows? I have to pretend I know what it means when I uh, teach people about it. Oh, you have to pretend you know what it means when you teach people about it. That doesn't sound safe. <laughs> I feel you should know about it. Okay, so say it for me. No, sounds like Nora Ephron, doesn't it? Which makes sense because she is the rom-com lady. Uh, norep, norepinephrine. Mm-hmm. Norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. Sorry? It's norepinephrine. Nor? Epinephrine. Epinephrine. Oh, I see that now. I see it in the word. Norepinephrine. <laughs> thank you, Johnny, and thank you, Sean. Sean. Now, I just want to give... Just, could you just give me a cheer if you're a woman or a non-binary person who knew the answer to that but didn't shout it out? Why is it? Why is it? There's so few men in this audience, but they were the ones with the confidence to go, a woman's asked for help, I'll be there. <laughs> Women and non-binary people in this audience knew, but you didn't. You were like, no, I'm, I might not know. We need more confidence. I'm not having a go at these guys. Well done. You came to my aid. I love it. I love it. I'm not saying you should have less confidence. I'm saying we should have more, just to be clear. Well done, Johnny. Thank you. (laughs) What is it that you do that you pretend to teach people about science when you don't know about it, though? Uh, I'm a researcher, and uh, often they want to talk about the neuroscientific underpinnings of things. I work in philosophy and educational research. What an interesting man. (laughs) Are you single, Johnny? (laughs) Is your girlfriend actually next to you? It's fucking Valentine's Day. He's working on it. He's working on it. Oh. Oh, I thought she, I thought you were like, uh, are we open? But in fact, you've brought her here on a date to impress her. You've brought her to a feminist show on Valentine's Day. Well done. Well done. It's a common strategy. Well done, Johnny. So you've invited a woman here on a date for Valentine's Day and you are hoping to seal the deal through helping me out live on stage. Now, has this made him sexier because he just went for it? Uh, Where where are we on the Valentine's Day ometer here? You know what? I'm I'm a scientist. I'm into it. That's my dirty talk. I'm a scientist. I'm into it. That's my dirty talk. It's working out for you, Johnny. Uh, we're all rooting for you here, Johnny. <laughs> if you are listening at home, um, Johnny's date said, nor epinephrine is my safe word. <laughs> Certainly will be tonight. Okay. Um. Anyway, those are the hormones that uh, give us the warm and fuzzy feelings. And they are the same regions, correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, because uh, it's uh, sexy, um, the same regions that light up when we're feeling attraction uh, light up when those addicted to cocaine take cocaine. It's exactly the same thing. And when we binge eat sweets, cocaine maintains dopamine signaling for much longer than usual, leading to a temporary high. And so addiction to cocaine or sweets is exactly the same as being chemically addicted to another human being. The only problem is you can't snort another human being. Um, <laughs> Stage three, attachment. The brain releases oxytocin and vasopressin, while oxidone, am I saying that correctly? 
Yeah. Gives us a surge of positive emotions. Vasopressin is linked with physical and emotional mobilization. You can also get these feelings from stroking a pet. So if you have a long-term relationship, you can replace that long-term relationship with a cat. Stage four, chemically, you can. Chemically, you can replace this with uh, a line of cocaine and a cat. Um, uh, Stage four, breakup. Uh, Breakup, sorry, that is stage four usually, isn't it? Let's be honest. Uh, Chemically, this is like either suddenly coming off a daily cocaine binge or watching your pet die, depending on whether you are in... Depending on how long you're in the relationship. It's It's either like just suddenly... Having no cocaine available when you've been used to it, or your cat just dying. Um, that's the equivalent of a breakup. And think about it. If you've just been dating somebody, you're having loads of sex, but you're not really in love with them yet, it is like, oh, fuck, I've got this itch now. But it can feel like a cat dying if you've been going out with them for six months. You'll be really sad and crying. Uh, when someone says, can we still be friends? And this is me now, really less of the science, but more, you know, just what I can make out and cobble together. Um, it's the equivalent if someone says can we just be friends it's the equivalent of your drug dealer saying you can look at the cocaine but not snort it (laughs) but I'll put it on the table for you have a look at it and just sit you have to sit there in front of it you can still be friends with the cocaine but you cannot ever uh, touch it Um, or if someone says can we still be friends if we're going out with them for a while it's like saying uh, your cat is dead but the good news is you can keep it Um, I hope you've enjoyed that study of uh, a science on Valentine's Day, science of love on Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. We've got an amazing guest. Our guest today is a qualified social worker and dating and relationships educator who left her 15-year career in the public sector in 2018 to bring her professional knowledge to social media. She uses her Instagram page to deliver advice and education on sex, dating, and relationships. Dialing in from an undisclosed location, the Banksy of sex and relationships, please welcome Lala Let Me Explain! Woo! Okay, we're going to hear the voice of the Banksy of Sex and Relationships. Lala, are you there? I'm there. Can you hear me? <gasps> hey. Oh, this is so exciting. Hello. Is it creepy just hearing me like it's, this? Do you know what? It's, it's working for me, man. <laughs> it's, hot, it's, hot. it's exciting because I feel like we... Because, you, know, you know, normally you're answering these questions online, but you're, you know, it, it, which is just hearing your voice and sort of, you know, feeling your presence in the room. Um, <laughs> If Susie and I are God and Jesus, you are very much the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so will I. Coming through Uh, the airwaves. Absolutely. So what we're excited to do is you spend your time online giving advice and education on sex, dating, and relationships. We are fascinated by the subject, and we have some questions, and our audience has some questions. Yeah, um, so thank you for joining us this is so cool that you're just here with your voice uh, oh i did it for you i love you oh i love you as well and deborah too yeah yeah, yeah. yeah deborah <laughs> flame emoji a- um okay so we've been talking about cheating do you see cheating as a feminist issue or not yes and i get backlash every time i say it but i don't care because what i truly believe is obviously there's a billion different caveats and i, I heard some of your conversation earlier and it's like but what if that what if the person is transgender? What if they're a different gender? You know, for all of the caveats aside, if we're thinking about a woman knowingly shagging a married man who's married to another woman or an attached man who's married to another woman, I absolutely know that the responsibility lays with the man who is betraying whatever commitment he's had to his partner But my view is that we are shat on so heavily and so systemically by men all the time. And if you knowingly shag someone or see someone and you're knowingly damaging or hurting another woman through doing that, then you have become a fuckboy enabler. Uh, And I know that other people... people Fuckboy enabler, yes. Yeah, you're a fuckboy enabler. I think we should make fuckboy enabler happen. Absolutely. No, don't make it happen. (laughs) I was about to say, let's not not encourage it, but let's uh, embrace the term. Um, I've got a question about navigating the territory of open relationships 
and also polyamory, which is different because I'm in an open relationship, which means that I can have the possibility of exploring sexually, but I am not polyamorous, i.e. I don't want other boyfriends or girlfriends or them friends. Um, I just want to explore sexually in a consensual way. Are there any guides that you would have, Lala, like traps for new players in either the open relationship space or the polyamorous space? And are there any ways in which those uh, uh, cross over? Uh, you know, I think it really is all about communication and about regularly checking in with yourself and with the people that you're shagging or the person that you have the commitment to, to check in that everything's still okay and to reset the boundaries and reaffirm the boundaries. I think sometimes open relationships and polyamory can work fabulously uh, but even with the best intentions I think sometimes our feelings can change sometimes we can begin to feel jealousy or feel that it's not working for us or feel worried and uh, I, I think that we should only be entering into these types of situations with people that we can have full frank raw conversations with who we can communicate with and who we can keep checking and changing if we need to I, I, I don't think we should ever set anything in complete stone to say, right, this is how it is. We're not moving. It has to be a fluid, constant thing of making sure that all parties are okay. Why do you think there are so many more open relationships and polyamorous relationships now than there were 10 years ago, or at least out once? Why has it become more common? I think women have been given permission to be honest with ourselves about what really works for us. I think that for a long time we've uh, had to hold down our desires and had to hold down our truths and our reality. And I, I think thanks a lot to social media and the fact that lots of different women are telling their stories online and we're accessing all of that. Mm. I think it's, it's given us permission to be able to say, yeah, actually, this sounds good to me. I may, maybe I'd like to try it. Um, but, but I also think we have to be careful as women. Oh, I'm such a cynic, but I do hear from a lot of women who have unintentionally been sort of led into open relationships or, or even polyamorous relationships where perhaps they have done it because they felt that they had to, to meet the bar of kind of sexually liberated. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there is room for messiness, but I certainly think it's a real positive and that women are much more open to to doing what feels right to them rather than what society says we should be doing. I listened to Chris Sweeney's Homo Sapiens podcast and I was listening to episodes where gay men were talking about how much the straight community has modelled contemporary relationships on what was seen as something gay culturally. So, you know, that fuck buddy culture, pickups, open relationships with, you know, respectful rules and that kind of thing. How much do you think the straight community, Lala, has co-opted the gay model or do you think it was just more socially acceptable and it's a human model? Uh, you know what? I, I, again, this is another one that I might get backlash for, but I think it's a lot more complex than just heterosexual community co-opting what what gay men have been doing since, since time began. I, I think that social media and dating apps have brought this kind of, uh, they brought along with them all of this kind of sexual liberation, but I'm wondering how much of it truly benefits women because casual sex culture and hookup culture for women who rely on clitoral stimulation for an orgasm, which is 75% of us, it doesn't necessarily serve us well. One night stands, uh, most men, most, not all, could stick a paper bag over someone's head, put their dick in a hole, and they're probably going to come. Whereas for us, it's much more complex you know you, your head needs to be in the right space you need to feel safe you need to feel sexy you need certain amounts of stimulation it just doesn't come as easily for most women and I, I think actually we've been fucked over by hookup culture because it feels like yeah we're all doing this let's be liberated but actually nobody educated the men on how to fuck us first so you know it's so you're it's saying like, yeah, yes to hookup culture but men should have to do compulsory community college yes clitoris <laughs> Clitoris college. How to operate a clitoris because many to most women have a clitoris. So there needs to be education on. But the more than that, more than just the practical. It needs, I mean, it feels like sexual liberation happened. Lots of women jumped on it. 
quite rightly, and, and it's brilliant that we are able now to have sex in the same ways that men did, but actually I'm not sure that it serves us as well as men. I think we kind of, yeah, I think, I think they're the ones that are winning, actually. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very complicated, it's a complex conversation. But yeah, I, yeah, it's annoying that men are winning. Susan McComa, did yes. you have a question? Yeah, I've got, I've got a question for you. I've actually got, kind of got two. So um, obviously you're anonymous because you're not here. And um, I mean, who are you? I mean, you could, I mean, you could, you could have just not wanted to come, but like, we know that you are anonymous. And if I know that you've explained it a few times, but just for the audience of people are new to your work, could you just explain why you've made that decision to be anonymous? Uh, there's quite a few reasons, but uh, mainly I started uh, the Instagram when I was still practicing as a social worker. Uh, it wasn't, it, the, the crossover doesn't really kind of work very well. Talking about casual hookup culture and clitoris is one, you know, in the evening and then the next day going in to tell somebody that they, you know, need to do X, Y, Z with their child. So initially it started off like that, but I've maintained my anonymity for a variety of reasons. One, for safety, because again, there's probably lots of people out there who don't like me. I've helped lots of women to flee to refuges and um, protected lots of women from very dangerous men. So I don't want them to see me or find me. Uh, I've got a little boy uh, who's going to go to secondary school in a couple of years. And um, sadly, we still live in, in a culture where he could potentially be bullied for being that kid whose mum chats about blowjobs online. I don't want that. And also, I just feel like I can be much freer. I can talk much more openly about my, my personal stuff. I think I'd be slightly embarrassed uh, to have my face attached to some of the stories I've told. But also because I can be whoever you want me to be. If my face was all over my Instagram account, I think we'd lose something because my advice is not about me. It's about a community and it's about all women. It's about any woman being able to say, yeah, I can relate to this. It doesn't matter that we're not the same age or that we're not uh, from the same culture or what, you know, I, I think it makes it much, much richer and more relatable to people. That's a great answer. Yeah. Really great answer. Thank you. Um, um, do we have any audience questions? Yeah, let's do audience questions. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, Deborah, so great to be here. I'm from Los Angeles, and I saw you when you were in the United States, and I brought all my family to see you oh, tonight. Thank so, you. yeah, I just am such a huge fan of the Guilty Feminist. <clears throat> but this is also uh, Lala. Thank you for staying anonymous. I truly appreciate the, for your safety. But this thing that went out hashtag West Elm Caleb. I don't know. TikTok, you would know this. No, I've not been TikTok. Okay, so happened in uh, Manhattan. Basically, what happened? There was a hashtag that went out. Hashtag West Elm Caleb, a uh, young jewelry designer in Manhattan. She posted on TikTok about how she'd had this horrible date because of the dating apps with a guy named Caleb. But then she started getting um, people chiming in. Are you talking about West Elm Caleb? And this is a completely different Caleb that she got, you know, fucked over by. So then apparently this West Elm Caleb became like this humongous thing. And he had been love bombing all these women and they all came together. <laughs> Just look up West Elm Caleb. So anyway, I have a lot of younger women friends who are in their 30s and early 40s and 20s across the board. And... For sure, Zs, this whole, you know, Bumble is the what worst one that they tell me all the time. They hate it. Um, but this West Elm Caleb phenomenon really, you know, really got to me because I was thinking, this is now working for these guys. It's totally working for them and not for women. It's supposed to be like great equalizer, but I don't see it like that. I mean, I've been in a long-term marriage. I met my soulmate when I was, you know and we're still together, you know, we're fantastic, but I really feel for young women and young people just in general across the board, LGBTQ, anybody who's really trying to make a connection. So, so, so is your question My about question is really if Lala knows about hashtag West Elm Caleb. Okay, so Lala, what do you have to say about dating apps for feminism for women? How oh, you, you absolutely need to buy my book. Block, delete, move on. Okay. It came out on uh, Thursday. What, what's the book uh, called? 
It's called Block, Delete, Move On. And Good it's advice. literally about... It's Do a, we need well, to read exactly. more than the title? Because I feel like we've been given the full instructions. <laughs> Everything's on the title. <laughs> block, delete, move on. It I'm, is literally all about the dating app experiences and what dating is like now, particularly from a feminist perspective, understanding how much misogyny underpins a lot of the interactions that we face online, how to spot that and how to shut it down. So I think that, that that's the only answer that I could possibly give to anything about how crap online dating is, is you have to read my book. How do we meet people not on apps now? Because you go to a bar, everyone's looking at their phone. Like, how do you, like, how do you do it? I do, well, see, well, I, do you know what? I just went on a date. I've told you about this. You know about this. I went on a date oh, yeah. with, <laughs> yeah. I went on a date uh, last week with somebody who I met in like real life. And this is how this is how you know the bar is in hell. <laughs> in in it's burning with the flames of Satan, right? This bar because I decided I'm, I met this guy in August last year. He gave me his number. Completely forgot about him because life happened. Then he messaged me two weeks ago saying, "Will you be my Valentine?" And I went, "Oh." This isn't a guy from a dating app. I met him in real life, so I will go on a date with him. That's how the bar is dead. The bar is dead. And it was the fucking worst date on earth. He walked it. I'm going to just quickly share this. I walked up the stairs, right? I think I was maybe wearing this outfit. And, um, and he looked at me and he went, oh. And I said, that's not an opening. And he said, oh, you've lost weight. And I went yeah I have a bit and he went ah oh, if it was you from August in front of me and you now I would choose you from August Ooh. I don't yeah, know whether he negative. thought that body positivity was working there he thought that he was like landing a shot but that was rude and controlling so I feel like you're kind of fucked whether you meet somebody in real life I feel mm. like there's these things that people can get from online so he clearly thought oh women want to just be told you know you're banned from going to the gym, which is also something that he said to me on our date. And, he said um, you're banned from going to the gym? He said, if we ever get into a relationship, you are not allowed to go to the gym anymore. Oh, God. This is, this is hell. This is, and that's what's not going a date. on here? That's not from an app. Lala, oh, sorry, we need no, your please. help. We need your help. Yeah. There are well, single people negging. in the audience. There are dating people in the audience. There are open relationship people in the audience. There are, what... Please, I'm looking to you like your God in the sky. I don't know where your voice is coming from, but we need help. How do we do dating now? It's hell. Honestly, I, the, the, I, read my book. It literally tells you step by step. I'm going to need I'm so to I'm, I'm definitely buying the book and reading it tonight, but I'm going to need <laughs> more on the podcast. Like, what Can you give me a nugget from the book that gives me any hope? You know, I can't because dating is fucking shit. It's shit. It's so shit. But How do the we facts are, we can't. And, and heterosexuality is a fucking curse if you're a woman. <laughs> I, I can't. We, we can't change men, unfortunately. We do have to remember, though, I, I say it in my book, the dating pool is a toilet. But among the curse, Heterosexuality is cursed if you're a woman and the dating pool is a toilet. Yeah. These are two yeah, chapters there, in size two. There are, some, there are some diamonds in the toilet. Uh, and we have there are some to diamonds in the to, toilet. Okay. Yeah. We have to be able to fish through the turds. We have to be able to spot the turds, not try to polish them, not try to go, oh, you're a big piece of shit, but you know what? I can fix you. We just have to know our self-worth, be completely content with being single, and then it's much easier to go, yeah, this is shit. There's loads of shit people, but I'm not going to waste my time on them because I'm convinced that a good one will come and, and I'll be ready to to step in when he does, or she, or they. Okay. Um, the, the audience wish to applaud you, Lala. Thanks, um, audience. If Love this, you. I, I feel, Lala, like this is probably... I don't know if I could even... Could, can or should say this, but I'm just going to go out there. It's called the guilty feminist. It's not called the perfect feminist, so I'm going to say it. Mm. If you are a bisexual or pansexual woman, or even bi should... Does it make sense to just limit your dating pool and go, let's just try women and non-binary people for a while and leave, like, just, it doesn't make sense? Or is this a prejudice? Is this bigoted to say, oh, I'm not going to date cishet men for a while? Is it, what do you think about this? 
Uh, you know, I think the problem is that if we say that all men are shit and it's not worth trying with men, then actually we, that's where we, we, we set the bar. We don't have any higher expectations. So when we do meet them, we tolerate more shit. Uh, what we need to do is, is, I mean, God, if I was bisexual or pansexual, I don't think I'd ever look at another man again. But I, I also feel that it's really important to, to be open to the fact that some of them are really great people. Some of them are yeah. really bloody wonderful humans. Johnny, we Johnny's can't great. Bar them. There's one in the audience, Johnny, I heard Johnny's, Johnny's brought his date here, Lala, and he's, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, but now you're putting so much pressure on the date. She's not. She's going to feel like shit. I've got the one good heterosexual man in the world. Now I'm going to have to keep him. But you oh, think it's not a know, reason to keep? But someone. I know so many lovely men who are straight. Exactly. I really exactly. do. I really do. I really do. So and do I, I. And I want to acknowledge the pressures on men from the patriarchy because I, I feel like sometimes men are really vulnerable, and I don't. I hate the men are trash thing for the same reason that you're saying is because then the men who are great. It's not about the men who are great. It's the men who are behaving badly go, oh, yeah, all the other men are like me. And they're not. Yeah, and so yeah. I do think we need to give men a chance, but not a very long one. Like each, <laughs> each man gets a very short chance. Like 15 I, minutes. That, I would say that's a long chance. 15 I'd say minutes. That's yeah, I would say five minutes, tap dance, do a juggle, show me what you've got. And I think a five-minute shot, and it's not because most some men, as I say, are very fantastic, and many men are, but but the ones that aren't really ruin it for the rest of them, don't they? And if you're here tonight and you're a man, welcome and thank you for coming and thank you for being a wonderful man, and I love you. Could you have a word to the others? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just have a word, just a small, just a please, Jesus Christ, please fucking hell, just, just, just take him to one side. Um, I want to do a speed round with Lala, so I'm going to, if you just shout your question, I'll say it yes. again. Okay, speed round, anyone got a question? Yes. How do you support women that are going through the menopause and feel their self-shame because their sex life has gone down the pan? Oh, great question. Um, Lala, how do mm. we support women who are ex going through the menopause and are being shamed because they feel their sex lives are going down the pan? Oh God, HRT, first of all, get a good doctor, get, get, make them listen to you, but also lube is your friend and there is absolutely no shame in pumping that lube up your fanny before anything happens. If you're sleeping with people who make you feel ashamed about being menopausal, get them in the fucking bin. It doesn't matter if they've been married to you for 25 years. If they cannot understand and support this part of your life, then they do not deserve to be inside your dry vagina. Um, there is no shame in being menopausal. And actually, I think I mean, we need far you're not, more... You're not beating around the bush, are you? All puns intended. She ain't. Um, okay, uh, you heard it here from Lala. Anything, anyone else for the speed round? Anyone else got a question? Yes, shout it out. Is there a difference between trauma and seeing red flags when there aren't any? I know exactly what you mean, yeah. Is there a way to tell when you're being triggered by old trauma and whether, the, whether there's a genuine red flag? What a great question, really Lala. Great. I guess it's the same kind of question as, is there a difference between gut instinct and anxiety? And I think the thing is, if you know you have a particular trauma you know you have something that makes you very anxious but then you'll know that that's something that happens as a generalized feeling often you you would hopefully have had therapy so that you understand what your trigger points are and you can relate it to that that's very different to being generally content being generally somebody who doesn't have a particular trigger and then spotting a red flag and knowing it's not, you know, the anxiety is there all the time and it can pop up for a million different reasons, whereas gut instinct it happens because you've been shown something. Mm. Does, does that answer the question? Yes. Because I guess trauma and red flags is two complete different should, things. And, and should we... Sh okay, the... Is there a way to detangle the general from the specific? Um, the, the, the audience member is asking because if you've been through it 
enough, you just you might see a red flag where there isn't one. Is it having a trusted advisor, someone that you can run it by? Is that helpful, Lella? That would really help. I mean, if if if, if your trauma is 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 so deep that, that you know therapy really is is the best way and you need to date very cautiously and you need to date with people who can understand your trauma and who can understand how to reassure you and, and not feel upset or offended if if you're uh, being triggered by certain things. It's really important for you as more than anyone to choose really safe, compassionate partners. Um, I, I've actually got a little bit to add to this. When I um, went to therapy after a, a, quite an abusive relationship... Um, I asked the very same question, like I was because of, for a period I was afraid of everybody, and I thought all men were trash, which is obviously not true. That's why I keep going on dates, um, and because there's hope there. And one of the things that she said and kept saying is, "You take your time, you go slowly." That sort of goes against everything that I've been told about modern dating and being a woman and getting out there as this, you know, do whatever. But like. Take your time to get to know somebody. Mm. Go as slow and glacially as you need. That's the only way that you'll realise whether, oh, I was overreacting or, oh, no, I spotted a, a, a red flag. Mm. Yeah. And listen to your friends because, you know, I've got friends where I think there's, you know, at the top, right at the top, there were so many red flags there we could have made bunting. <laughs> and and you know but, but they they're not necessarily asking and it's rude to say your new boyfriend um so i think it's it's it just have trusted advisors where you go hold on is this me being triggered by something that isn't you know isn't there or i could have a conversation about and should i have a conversation and communicate and also are they open to the conversation of you going look this used to happen in another relationship and what you've done here reminds me of that but it could be a shadow or a reflection and let, if they're not willing to go there and talk about it or they're glossing it over or love bombing you, then that in itself is the red flag. Um, I think that's probably all we've got time for unless someone's got a real final one that they're burning. Hmm? What? No, they haven't. Okay. <laughs> Apparently nobody's got a burning question. But if you have, can you go to at Lala Let Me Explain and ask Lala there? And if you could get Lala's book, which is called... Block, delete, move on. Block, delete, move on. Buy it this evening. Uh, you will not regret it. Uh, thank you so much, Lala. Thank you so much, thank Lala. You. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Susan McComa, do you have anything to plug? Ah, just watch Cheaters if you want to see some more cheating. It's on iPlayer, BBC iPlayer. It's on the television on BBC One on Tuesdays. Uh, get into it. Thank you very much. Um, absolutely brilliant show. It's so much fun, you guys. You're really going to enjoy it. Uh, all right. Uh, so our musician is a wonderful new talent. Uh, her hit song, uh, I have been playing absolutely on a loop uh, for the last few months. Please welcome the incredible Maisie. <laughs> Maisie, have you got a song for us? Uh, I do. This is a song called Yellow Line. It's um, my next song that I'm releasing on the 25th of February. I don't know if that will have already been or if that's coming. Yeah, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, 25th of February, it's called Yellow Line. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Take it away, Maisie Thank and you. Chris. <laughs> Now you've got your sunrise and I've 
gone mine How it hurts sometimes Memories play back in my mind I lost you On that yellow line Hear your voice Through a screen With too much silence in between Talk each day Not the same Have we run out of things to say If I'd have known this would be the last time I would have held you tighter Never let you go I'll be singing love songs into FaceTime Now you've got your sunrise and I've got mine How it hurts sometimes, memories play back in my mind I lost you on that yellow line Don't know, don't know how I lost you Can't stop thinking about, thinking about it Don't know, don't know, don't know how I lost you Can't stop thinking about, thinking about it I'll be singing love songs into FaceTime now you've got your sunrise and I've got mine How it hurts sometimes, memories play back in my mind I lost you on that yellow line I'll be singing love songs into space Now you've got your sunrise and I've got mine How it hurts sometimes, memories play back in my mind I lost you singles give her a big follow up Maisie 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 thank you also to Chris thanks to everybody at King's Place thanks to my incredible co-host Susan Wakama I've been Deborah Francis White we've been the Guilty Feminists thank you so much good night I've been listening to The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest co-host Susan McClure, and our very special guest, La La, let me explain, with music from Maisie. The recording engine was Chris Sharp, the Guilty Feminist theme tune was composed by Mark Hodge, the producer was Tom Solinsky for the Spot Today to Jump, thanks to Zoe, Sally, and everyone at King's Place, as well as all of you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com. If you are, uh, and uh, if you're non-binary and you think it's, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's um, I'm sort of then asking people to, to identify. If you're a woman or a person of my minority gender and you think hookup culture is not serving you, just go, hmm? Okay, all right. I think I've, I've, I've asked too many questions. You've asked too okay. many questions. You're too nosy. Sue's, <laughs> Sue, I, I, it's too, it's, it, okay. Sue, <laughs> just edit that one out, Tom, because I don't think that worked. And that's my fault. That's on me. Okay, Susan McComa, did you have a question? The Guilty Feminist is provided exclusively from Acast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts.